How's it going everybody? Today I am here playing Don't Starve and I'm going to show you some of the best ways to stay cool in the summer. Now as you probably know in Don't Starve during the summer you actually have to maintain your body heat. You got to keep an eye on it because you can easily overheat and as a matter of fact it's more dangerous in the summer than, the, than in the winter because you actually have a harder time cooling back down. So I think summer is definitely the most dangerous season and this is one of the main reasons is due to the uh, danger from heat so my favorite way of staying cool in the summer is probably sometimes overlooked but you can simply build a very special fire the endothermic fire will actually cool down Wilson instead of warm him but the bit the downside to this is you'll no longer be able to cook any food in it and it is considered a fire so if you have a ice fling o -matic place down it will put this fire out during the night which is why I like to place it away from my main base so I'll have uh, ice fling o -matic set up around my base and then I'll have the fire away from it so that way if if, uh, if some fire starts, or if I start my fire during the night, I'm not going to have to worry about turning my ice fling matic off or my camp going up in flames. So that is the first and probably the easiest way to stay cool. But now, of course, you're going to be wondering, you know, what do I do when I need to go out and about? And my favorite way of staying cool, once again, is you can use the same thermal stone that you can use during, um, during the winter. So if we go here into survival find a thermal stone there we go and now you can see the thermal stone is currently hot but as we stick around this fire it'll build that up a bit and it will gradually cool down and this will help you stay cold so now we're going to talk about the two really the, the principles behind staying cool number one is to either reduce your overall body heat and the other one is to prevent your heat from rising now the fire for one lowers your body heat whereas the thermal stone will slowly will help prevent your body heat from rising so there are two different factors there are two different strategies here that you can both leverage to your best ability and a lot of clothing items that will help uh, with the synergy here so for example if i get a uh, i'm looking for the straw hat here we have the straw hat if i'm wearing the straw hat and I go out here, I've got my thermal stone currently equipped. It's very cold. I can go out, this will slow down the rate at which my body temperature rises and it will take me longer to overheat. So I'll have more flexibility in the amount of uh, area I can cover before needing to get another fire or any other thing that cools you down, which is the second uh, mechanic that I play here. So in addition to say for example the fire which the endothermic fire pit which is my favorite and probably the easiest thing to use to cool keep yourself cool in the summer uh, the siesta lean to is another it's a building and it functions much like the tent except instead of just allowing you to sleep through the night it allows you to sleep through the day and it'll also restore or reset your uh, overall body thermometer quite down down quite low and it will also give you some health and stuff back so then the, the final one would be eating certain foods like the watermelon. Now, I don't have a watermelon with me currently. I have a, water, a fashion melon, but eating certain foods will also reduce your overall body temperature a little bit. So keep an eye out for those. You can probably check the wiki. And uh, the best way to cope is not by jumping from tree to tree. It's not from eating food, but to actually build a fire and pretty much tunnel the way you do in the winter. You're going to have to be restricted to your base. Uh, so you're not going to be moving around. You're definitely going to have the same mobil mobility that you do during other seasons, but you can manage it quite nicely. It's still the most dangerous season, especially due to the monster that spawns during the summer, the dragonfly, but it can definitely e and quite easily be coped with if you know what to expect. So you got the straw hat here. You can also equip the fashion melon. This one will cool you actively, but it, at the same time, you're going to be taking water. This is a good option if you currently don't have a fire available and need to walk around uh, without having to worry about overheating. Of course, one of the biggest dangers during the summer is that unlike in winter, you're going to have to deal with things starting on fire, especially things in your camp. Now, the best way to fight against this is probably to build the ice fling matic and once it is built, you it's placed and you can turn it on. But as I m mentioned before, uh, you probably don't want to build it near to a campfire because it will actually put it out even if it's an endothermic fire pit. But the ice fling mat can be fueled with any traditional fuel source, so like logs or uh, glommers goo. And it will help prevent your base from burning down, which is actually quite important during the summer months. Now, a thermal stone is definitely the most useful, just like it is in winter. And if you have a cool place to put it, like in a refrigerator, you, can, you don't have to put it next to the uh, fire. So I, I, 
I personally prefer this because I don't have to have a fire burning all the time. I can actually just put down the fridge and then put my thermal stone in it. So usually I'll be running two thermal stones. And when I run two thermal stones, um, if I, if I start overheating, I'll just come back to my camp, put my hot thermal stone into the refrigerator, take my cold one out and I'm good to go again. So I hope this will help you survive better in the summer. I know not it's a bit unstructured, the, the uh, direction I took this in. And there is definitely a lot more to cover here, but it hopefully gives you just a basic overview of how you can actually survive through the summer months. It doesn't deal with anything too specific. There are a lot of options here you can use, and you shouldn't feel at all pigeoned into any one particular strategy because all, there are plenty of them that are viable. So I'm going to thank you as always for watching. I hope you found this informative, and I hope to see you next time.